Hi, this is Federico with Cuddle, and this video is part two of our inlay earring series. In the previous video, we showed you how to make inlay earrings with your laser cutter and showed you how to get the perfect press fit with our tester. If you've never made inlays before, I recommend you check out that video first. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own inlay designs using the Cuddle editor. Everything I'll be showing you in this video can be done for free using the Cuddle web app. So let's get started. The inlay kit can be found in the Cuddle templates page, but I'm also gonna leave a link to it in the description below. Here, we need to look for the jewelry and wearables category, which is right here. So I'm gonna click on it. And right here is the free inlay kit. So I'm gonna click on it to open it. And here on the template page, I can see the video tutorial and some text instructions on how to use it and some additional tips for design and assembly. Unlike the other Cuddle templates, this one doesn't have a place to download a pre-made SVG. It's a little bit different. In order to use it, we need to open it in the Cuddle editor. And that's what this button over here is for. So let's click on it. And the thing we have here is the other side of Cuddle, which is a full-fledged SVG editor that works on the browser. And this particular project has a couple of helping features to make the process of designing inlay projects really easy. The project comes with an example uh, design right here, which is a heart inside of a circle. But the first thing we want to do in order to start working on a different project is to copy this project. So as you can see, there was a prompt down here at the bottom that says this project is owned by Cuddle, make a copy to save your changes. So uh, hit the blue button, says copy this project. And this is gonna create a copy to our projects folder so all the changes are going to be saved. And one nice thing to do is to just go ahead and change the name of the project. So I'm gonna click up here and give it a different name. I'm just gonna call it example for <laughs> this video. So here on the right, if I click on the show all button, you'll see that there is that curve setting that we found out on previous steps. So we're pretty familiar with that by now. And here on the left, I can see that there are two uh, sections. One is called design and the other one is called cut. So if I click on the cut one, I can get to see that this is the stuff I would want to cut on my laser. But here is sort of like the design preview. And the way this uh, kit works is that if I make any changes here on the design uh, area, for example, if I click on the heart and I uh, scoot it a little bit down, I'm using my arrow keys, then I go look at the cut then that change was immediately reflected on the cut. You can see how the heart is a little bit down now. And here on the cut section of this project, I can show you what the two other uh, options do. So if I click on flip inner pieces, you'll see how the inner piece, the heart, flips uh, back and forth. And that's uh, meant for that operation where we flip it to assemble it. So sometimes you want to do that and sometimes you might not. So. Uh, I recommend that you do it, uh, but you can change it if you need to. And then the other option that I have here is if I click on the earrings checkbox, it generates a second copy that is also appropriately fit to create two symmetric earrings. Uh, and the design didn't change. I, I only need to design a single one and then it immediately makes two copies for me to cut. But let's talk about designing. I'm gonna move over here to the design section and I'm gonna actually delete whatever is here so I can start with a fresh design. First thing I wanna do is to block out the outside shape or the overall shape of my design. And there is a library of shapes here on the left that I can choose from. In order to grab any of these shapes, I simply need to click on it and drag it onto my work area. So that drags a rectangle uh, in place. Um, but there is a phone shape um, I think works well for an earring that I want to look for. And I can also use this search box uh, to search for different shapes. I have something in mind. I have this trapezoid that I think looks cool. So I'm going to grab that trapezoid, place it on the center of my work area. I'm going to uh, click on the rectangle and delete it. So I think something like a one and a half inch long by one inch wide. It's a good starting place for an earring. So I'm going to zoom in here. And when I select the shape, I can see the dimensions. And if I click on this dimension right here, I can actually change it by typing the number that I want. So I'm working in inches, so I'm going to type 1.5. And that stretches my shape nicely. In order for the shape to work with this project, I need to apply a fill to it. So let's look at these. Um, I'm going to select the shape again. I'm going to close this here for a moment. And then there's an option down here that says fill. So if I uh, click on that checkbox, then it assigns a fill uh, to the shape. And I, I can actually change the color by clicking here on this color selector. So let's give it a red color to start with. And if I go and check on the cut section of my design, I can see that I have those shapes. And because I had the earrings uh, checked, then I have two of them. So let's go back to the design. Now I want to create an inlay onto the shape. 
So I only need to grab any other shape and place it on top. So let's try a circle. I'm going to click here on the circle, drag it onto the work area. I'm going to place it roughly on the center and I'm going to make it bigger. So let's type a number here, something like 0.6 inches. That sounds, that sounds about right. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Um, and then uh, to actually make it turn into an inlay, I also need to apply a fill to the circle. So if I click on the circle, there's an option down here for the fill. And importantly, I want the fill color to be different from the uh, base shape. So gray should be fine, but let's uh, use pink. And if I go look in the cut section, you'll see how it got separated into the two sections that I wanted uh, for my cut. So let's go back to the design. Now to make this work as an earring, I want to have a little hole on the top. So I'm going to grab another circle and then I need to apply a fill to this one. And specifically any fill that is white is going to turn into a hole. So let's see, I'm going to select the fill option and I'm going to change the color to white. And then if I go look in the cut section, you'll see that I have the hole on top and then I have the two separate pieces that I'm going to inlay. Now let's make some changes to this hole to make it actually work. Through some experimentation, we found out that a good hole size for most jump rings is about uh, 0.06 inches. So I'm going to click here on the scale and type 0.06 and then press enter. That's roughly about 1.5 or 1.6 millimeters. And we also know that it needs to be a certain distance from the edge. So I'm going to come in really close by zooming in. So I'm actually going to move it all the way up if I grab it like this um, and I'm going to be touching the edge. So the distance it needs to be from the edge is also about 0.06 inches. The way I'm going to move it down now is to click on it. And then if I grab it from the top and just drag it down, you can see I can sort of snap it to the shadow of its previous position. And that's just going to give me the right distance. And I think some final refinement to this shape is to make those corners rounded. I think anytime you're uh, making something that someone's going to wear, it's nice to have nice rounded corners. So one easy option to do that is to select the trapezoid and I'm going to go to this modify menu and then there's an option called round corners. So that applies the corners to it and I can actually select the radius of the corners by changing this number right here. So I think something like that looks good. And when I'm happy with my design or I simply want to do a test cut, I can go to the cut part here, then go to file. And then there's an option to export an SVG. So I can click there and that's going to download the SVG that I want. I can always do a standard SVG and hit download. And that gives me a file that is just ready to cut with all of these adjustments applied to it. But let's try another version just to show you that you are not limited to pre-made shapes. So let's go back to the design section and let's delete all of these. So I want to draw some sort of asymmetric triangle um, that is going to be the overall shape of my earring. So I want to click on this pen tool. There's a sort of pen icon. Uh, so when I click on it, uh, what I get to do is to draw any random shape. So I can uh, start a point and you can see how a line stretches out of it like a sort of rubber band. And then I only need to click somewhere to create an additional point. And then another rubber band kind of stretches out of it. And then I'm going to click to create another point. And then just to finish it, I'm going to click on the first point I created. And that creates a basic shape. And when I'm done, I'm just going to hit the escape key. So I get out of that editing mode and I get to confirm the size of my shape. So I'm going to zoom in to make sure uh, things are looking good. And here, once again, I just want to readjust my shape to a kind of reasonable size. So I'm going to uh, make it one and a half inches. Um, so that should scale everything up. And if I want to go back and make any edits to the shape, I just need to double click into it and then I can move those nodes around if I want to. So I'm going to bring this one down a little bit. Um, but that, that should be the basic shape that I want. So this looks like a good start. I'm going to uh, select it again and I'm going to apply a fill to it. So let's select that fill. I'm just going to use red again for my outside shape. And it's a very pointy triangle, so I think I'm going to apply that same uh, round corner, corners modifier. So let's apply that. That's a bit much. So let's reduce the radius of each corner to something like that. Um, and now let's add that hole for the uh, jump ring. So I'm going to do that same operation uh, of grabbing a circle. Uh, I'm going to choose a similar size to before, 0.06 uh, inches. 
and then I'm going to give that a white fill so it turns into a hole and I'm going to zoom in so I can uh, position it uh, not at the very top I want to position it a little bit down you know its own uh, diameter down and I actually going to move I'm actually going to move it a little bit to the left and I can confirm that things are working by looking at the cut section here so yeah that's the shape I'm looking for. Now let's add that inlay. So I'm gonna zoom out uh, a little bit to see what I'm doing. And I think I'm just gonna draw another triangle inside of this one. So I'm gonna use that pen tool again. And I want it to be a little bit loose. And when I'm done, I can uh, hit escape or I can also just click the select tool. And let's apply the same uh, round corners to that one. So I'm gonna go here to modify, apply round corners, make it a little bit less or much less to sort of uh, match it there. And the final touch is to give that uh, uh, triangle and a fill. So let's select the path, uh, click on fill, and then let's give it a different color. And if I look at the cut, all those settings should have been applied to it. So let's look at it more closely. So this looks good. If I look at the settings, I can see that the inner pieces are flipped. Um, I have the setting for earrings and then the curve has been applied so the outside has been expanded and the inside has been contracted i can sort of see that if i exaggerate it a bit um, but we should use the default that worked for me and when i'm ready i can simply go to file and export svg and i'm gonna cut this one and show you what it looks like Here's the main triangle. I also marked the top of the cut and these are the inlays which i also marked because they are wood. I'll flip it in place and then press it down with a piece of scrap. Same operation on the other side. I can now peel off the masking tape so I can reveal that contrast between the maple and the walnut. I'll open the jump ring and twist it in. And I'm doing this 45 degree twist on the hook. So when I place it on the jump ring and close it, the flat part of the earring is going to be facing forward though this is totally optional it depends on how you like the earring to hang from your ear now the other side i'm going to do the same 45 degree twist on the hook place it on the jump ring and close it up The Cuddle Editor is a whole topic unto itself and we have a lot of video tutorials and other resources to get you started using it. And if you have any additional questions or ideas you want us to explore, I encourage you to join the Cuddle Facebook group where I do a weekly live stream answering questions from the community about using the Cuddle Editor and even creating your own templates. If you found this tutorial helpful and you want to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Also, leave us a comment. Let us know what you would like to see next. And thank you so much for watching.